Hey everybody, this is Brett Ingram, and this is the Optimize Podcast, the show that helps entrepreneurs build their dream business and dream life. Today we're talking with Seth Goldstein, former journalist turned entrepreneur, podcaster, digital marketer, and founder of Goldstein Media. I'm super excited because I've always been fascinated by journalism for one, and Seth has been hosting his own podcast since 2010. As a relative newbie to this compared to him, I want to know how it's all evolved. So with that, welcome, Seth, and hey. thanks for joining us. Thanks, Brett. Thanks for having me on. This is a thrill. I'm usually yeah. on the other side of the interview, Mike, doing the podcast. <laughs> Quick correction, I've been doing this since 2021, this show. I've been podcasting various different shows since 2010-ish. Plus or minus a year, it's kind of gets all blurry back then. Sure. I mean, but, but you've been in the yeah, game for a long better. time. You've seen a lot for me. Oh. Um, I've maybe been in dabbling for a couple of years and then serious over the last year or so. It's so fun, though. You're certainly I, I a veteran love it. compared to me. I love it. Um, and like people are like, oh, you're an OG. I'm like, I don't know OG. I mean, there's people that have been develop- <laughs> doing podcasting since before when you used to have to trade MP3s or MP4s. No, we weren't probably MP4s back then. And put CDs back via, yeah. via floppy disk, not floppy disk, yeah. via USB drive. But before awesome. Apple got into the game and made it mainstream. So, exactly. For a while. So, of course, uh, we want to get into all the stuff that you're doing now, but my curiosity does get the better of me. So, I've got to ask you what led you to your career in journalism, first off, and oh, what was that like? That's a fun one because. I wanted to do marketing. I wanted to do advertising coming out of high school. I've been doing websites a little bit on the side and I really liked it. And I'm like, well, but I don't want to do business school because I don't want to do calculus. I don't want to do any arithmetic if I can avoid it. <laughs> um, very much right brained. So I went to University <laughs> of Delaware and I was like, all right, I'm going to do history. I'm going to do, eventually I picked up a history and journalism degree. It's a history of the concentration of journalism. Though so journalism was, almost as much time as the hit major. So I was okay. got a history and journalism degree because they still don't have a journalism full degree, but they have, I think it's a minor now. It okay. was a concentration when I was there. But anyhow, then I got picked up a, um, a minor in anthropology and political science, just because why not? Like, what the heck am I going to do with it? I mean, it's adult lay in my opinion. So <laughs> I, I was like, I, how am I going to go into marketing? But I had to show that I, I know how to write. So I was like, journalism sounds like fun. I had do, I started my journals, my school paper back in high school so I, oh, everyone in high school knew i was gonna be a journalist before i did okay everyone and everyone knew i was gonna be a marketer before i did so i mean those two things everyone's like he's gonna do one of these two or both and that in this matter and so i i got into that sweet talk the professor into laying me into the rather you know competitive and um popular journalism major um thank you harris ross may rest in peace not around with us anymore but he great guy got me in nice. um and I was on. I was at the school paper, the, the, the University of Delaware, University of Delaware Review. It was called the Review. And Biden, our now President Biden, is an alumni of the University of Delaware. Right. Was walking by the PR offices in his Senate offices, and heard them talking to the Review. And he's like, "Let me get on the phone." And he and he talked to me about the story. It was no a very That's awesome. in name story. But he's like, "Hey, how's it going?" Great guy. I mean, regardless of the politics, he's a great dude. Yeah. I mean, he's just, he's just down to earth, nice fella. And as we awesome. talked for about five minutes, I was like shaking the whole time because it's like it's Biden. <laughs> I'm talking to a senator. I'm like, I'm like a sophomore at this time. I'm like, ah. So I was hooked. Survey. I was, I was yeah. hooked. I was hooked from that day on. I was like, I wanted to do journalism. You know, Woodward and Bernstein is back when the whole thing with Stephen Glass and the New Republic came out and Jason yep. Stark over at the New York Times, the fabrication. So, Journalism was very, you know, in the, in the, you know, in the, under the microscope. Um, I now, my good friend now, Ben Yagoda was, you know, was my, kind of my mentor there. He's still a good friend of mine. He actually wrote for the New Yorker, the New York Times, the Post, all these other magazines, the Atlantic. He's, and he's writing books out the wild. So I have all his books back there somewhere. If you're watching the video and he's like, like keep going, keep going. So I guess so I got out of, out of Delaware, got a job at a, Evening daily in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania, where there's more cows than humans. Did that for a while, burned out massively because I was doing evening police reporting, so I saw some gnarly stuff. Ooh. So s- seven months at that job, I had to leave. I was like, I went into my office, my, my editor in chief's office, and said, I have to, I have to leave in two weeks. He's like, 
take two weeks of vacation. You can leave right now. He saw me. He saw, he saw me. I yeah. lived there. I was like yeah. eight in the morning to like three o'clock in the, in, in the morning. Like I lived there. Well, something I did. There's Cowles. There's Gettysburg, yeah. which you can only go to so many times. You know, it's only so much you can. I mean, I, I know that battlefield at the back of my hand because of this. Right. And I was just like, you know, so I, so then I went back. Worked for the Courier Times, and the Calkin Media Properties over in Bucks County in the you know suburbs of Philadelphia for a while. More feature stories. Stayed away from the hard news as much as possible. Eventually, it was like I gotta get out of this. Not enough pay. I mean, because they they pay you chicken feed unless you make it to the I'm big sure. game. And even then, yeah. in, in relationship in relation to your experience, you're still getting paid chicken feed. Right. I mean, making a living wage, but no, I wasn't even making a living wage. So oh. I was like, all right. My then fiance, my now wife, is like, you know, you wanted to go into web design when you started out. You've been doing doing it on the side this whole time. So why don't you start a business to get the experience to get the job? Oops. And, you know, and then 16 years later, I'm still doing Goldstein Media. I dabbled with guy in the podcasting. Entrepreneur's Enigma is the podcast I'm do doing now. I had Digital Marketing Dive, which is, is on hi in infinite hiatus just because I don't have time for two podcasts. Yeah. It's, so, it's a lot. I mean, it's, it's, a lot. it's easy to it's easy to think because you, you watch a short episode or you listen to a short episode a that you can throw them together. But it actually requires a lot of work. And I don't even, I don't even edit that much. Like yeah. I, I, I'll make a note in my head and then put a note in my Notion document. Like if there's a gaff that needs to be fixed. But you don't want to. I don't. This is not NPR. This is not Terry Gross. This is not. You're not. I'm not Diane Sawyer. I'm not Barbara Walters. May she rest <laughs> in peace. You know. I'm not going to grow these. Everyone's like, oh, have the questions ahead of time. I'm like, no. Like if you listen right. to my show, there's three questions, and. And the first 15 minutes is me just talking to them about the, their entrepreneurial journey and yeah. tie things up with those questions. And then we got to get it off the program, 20, 25 you know, minutes. It's, it's funny because I, I have a similar mentality. I think that the authenticity mm -hmm. is the thing that makes yeah. it valuable. So I don't prep, honestly, to be honest with you. Yeah. I don't prep for my podcast. I will glance over that. I'll, I'll ask them for their intake form and their bios. So I'll read the bio a little bit. Right. I, 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 I'm because I'm because I'm I was a credential journalist. I was a professional journalist. I didn't feel the need. I don't feel the need to prep. Right. I much rather be surprised and see where the conversation goes. Yeah, I like that too. You know, I don't I think suggest that for everyone. To to. It's tough because it's like if you don't know where you're going, and you're new to journalism, you're new to podcasting, you're new to interviewing people. Have a list of questions. Don't read them off. Right. But in case you stumble, you have something to fall back on. Exactly. See, I always have those three questions. I know if, if, if the guy's wrapping up around 11 minutes, I know I have at least five more minutes worth of questions. Right. Go. Yeah, that makes sense. The worst is when so, there's two minutes. They're like, they answer your, your initial question in two minutes. You're like, dude, I need more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So your transition, it was based mostly on financial. You you wanted to get and into burnout. And burnout. I think it was more burnout than anything yeah. else. I, in between journalism and my entrepreneurial journey. I did some sales a little bit there. Now, and why like, did you choose to actually start a business doing it as opposed to just getting a job like your fiance now wife had suggested? Well, she, we both said that we need to build up the portfolio and cause you need the experience to get the job to get the experience to get the job. Right. And so I wanted to get the experience to get the job and I just kind of kept going before I knew it was five years. And I, I do say there is version one of Gold Media and version two of Gold Media because there was this when my son was born, I did go work for a subsidiary of Merck. I did their their internal social media for a little while. So I, I did put it on the back burner. I got a job not in web design in marketing. Okay. Yeah, learned I do not like corporate America. I only like kicking <laughs> heels backsides and knowing who to talk to when. And like I'm just that's not how I fly. I'm a, I'm a trade journalist. I go in. I talk to you. That's it. I don't want to yeah. know. Like, don't talk to Joe now because he's got a bug up his backside or anything like that. Like, come on. Yeah. So I, so I left. I was there for about a year and a half, and I was like, I, I went to my boss again. I said, I'm out. Peace. <laughs> I gave him two weeks. He's like, and he's like, all right, we'll take the two weeks. Thank you. They you took know, the two weeks though. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, it, it is funny though. I mean, I think people are wired in different ways, mm -hmm. and I know, you know, for me too, uh, it was always hard for my wife to understand that. It's hard for me to work for other people in the, in a traditional sense. I mean, 
I, I did have one job, I have to say, that I absolutely loved the company. The culture was amazing. Yeah. If the dot-com crash didn't happen, I don't mm -hmm. know where things would have gone because I was it was a consulting company that was in that era. Ooh, and we were about to, spot, about to yeah. IPO. <clears throat> and um, unfortunately, um, they actually stayed around. They didn't, they didn't close. Oh, but wow. Was, they survived it somewhat. Yeah, but I was in the New York office and they mm. were Santa Clara based. And so... Outside we ended up shutting mind. down yeah. all the East Coast. They shut everything down. They got a lot smaller. And and then unfortunately, it just, you know, so, but for me, I, I had mixed experiences working yeah. for other people. I've done it enough times. And in some cases, I had really good experiences. And then other ones, I, I said, just don't I, work I, retail if you can help it. Like, I, they don't pay you anything. In the, <laughs> I actually walked, I quit my retail job at Circuit City back in the day. Okay. Because they made, they said they're paying me $10 an hour. And they said, you need to get different shoes. And I'm like, you're going to either buy me the shoes or I quit. And they're like, we're not buying you shoes. Get new shoes. I'm like, well, here's my two weeks. And they're like, get out of here. I'm like, fine. Did they I mean, give you commissions? Like, my wife teases me. She's like, you quit a job because they wanted you to buy new shoes. I'm like, well, they weren't going to buy them for me. They weren't paying me enough to buy new shoes. That's I'm funny. Like, I mean, but but it is true. I mean, yeah. if you have to, if, if, if you feel like you're in it alone and they're just mm -hmm. using you, as opposed to being, you know, together That's trying great. to make the company a better place, you don't feel any buy-in, you don't feel any investment in that. So why exactly. would you? It wasn't even a good give... discount even either. It was like, <laughs> it was like cost plus like ten percent. Okay. It was like what the hell? Yeah, because a discount at a place like that would be worth something otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, it sure. wasn't that good, or maybe it was that cost what they paid for the stuff, but it wasn't that good. So. So I know that there are a lot of people out there that are in traditional careers right mm -hmm. now. And they're either thinking about making the leap to entrepreneurship or maybe they've started it, but they're just not at a point yet where they're comfortable. They know whether they're going to be able to make I'm it. I'm not comfortable in 16 years. <laughs> I was going to say. If you're comfortable in entrepreneurship, you're, you're doing something wrong <laughs> and you should probably go back to corporate America. You can't be comfortable. Oh, you know, it's nice to know you're not alone. I mean, every entrepreneur feels that way. It's just oh, that we're not supposed it's paycheck, to feel that way. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes it's paycheck to, paycheck to paycheck, other times it's not. And sometimes you're like, and when my wife comes down and says, Ray, a check for $4,000 this week. Great. That's my paycheck. Great. I'm happy. Other times she's like, Ray, you're still 100 bucks. I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> it can be torturous, that's for sure. And yeah. people don't always understand the challenges of being Correct. able to only eat what you kill. So it's like if, you know, if you're in that environment and you've got to, yeah provide for yourself there's you you get to ride the wave of the upside too and that can be great mm -hmm. but what people see is the tv version where it's all this freedom and lifestyle what and it's lifestyle? not always like that i mean yeah. I, I i have the freedom to work 80 hours a week <laughs> but if you do I mean, it's you a love. cliche it's a, that's a very big cliche but it's yeah. the truth i have the freedom to work when i took us off more than saying i nine to five nine to six you know eight to six whatever the heck the your time frame is and then clock out and leave i don't leave you know right. for better or for worse i mean i love what i do i podcast do all this fun stuff so it's like you know people ask me what my hobbies are I'm like my job yeah my family and yeah. my job you know because i enjoy what i do it's fun for me right maybe because not not fun which it does at times you gotta realize it's something i want to do you know so, it always falls back to that so so is that in terms of advice or tips that you would give to somebody who's thinking about it or sort of I say try started, it. Try it. Well, I would say do a side hustle first. Start something up on the side. Do your nine to five and do your five to nine, five to ten at night. Even if you have a family, you know, just do something on the side. And then sometimes, I mean, in the 242 episodes of Entrepreneurs in the Name, I can't believe there's that many right now. <laughs> Everyone has said different things about it, but you know, ultimately they say like, you know, some of these people started a side hustle and then it got to be too time consuming and it was enough money for them to jump ship and yeah. do their own thing. Other people are still doing side hustles yeah, and it's, it's still entrepreneurship. It's just, it's a different kind. And some people are entrepreneurs and they're, they're in a company, but they're have the freedom to kind of do whatever the heck they want or yeah. within constraints that they are like the business expansion people. So. But you think it's important, I take it, to do something that you love and that you're passionate about, yeah. because obviously that's going to make it. Yeah, possible. some people are made for entrepreneurship. Some people aren't. It's yeah. not always freedom. Sometimes it's right. a jail. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's both sides of the coin. Just like corporate yes. America or working for the man or the woman or the person, 
is that it could be the freedom and not freedom and all that stuff. Not it's some people are made for entrepreneurship. Some yeah, people aren't. I mean, my my father worked for an insurance company for twenty five years, and literally on his twenty fifth anniversary, it was a. I mean, this is back in the day where you get go watch. You got pensions, and companies took care of you, and you gave your career to one company. You didn't jump around no, like they jump like around nowadays. So now. And on his twenty fifth anniversary, the day of his party, his boss was flying down from Philadelphia to lay him off. And his colleagues got wind of it. They called and they said, you can't, we're doing his party today. He's getting his watch. You know, uh, you, you can't come today. So he waited two weeks, came down two weeks later and laid him off. My point. Well, that's least nice that he waited. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But my point is, uh, you know, to your point, exactly. Any kind of security, any kind of idea like There's that. A it's all an either illusion side. anyway. Yeah. And because you just never know. I mean, you could get laid off tomorrow. So despite the fact you get a steady paycheck and you could have a good day or a bad day, if you're an entrepreneur, it's harder to have bad days because you're only getting what you get, but you have a little bit more at least feeling of control because it's mm -hmm. it's your gig. Whereas if exactly. you're there's, there's else, more control and less control at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I know you've seen and done a lot in your various careers in life. Yeah. Is there one <laughs> favorite like. story? Is there one crazy or cool story? Well, crazy stories, don't get me started on that. Once I chased <laughs> a combine through a cornfield because they had found a dead body in the field, an overdose victim. It was back, like, I think it was like meth or something or whatever. I don't know if they'll quote me on that. Out in that, nowhere, Pennsylvania, I'm chasing this combine in a, in a jacket and tie and cargo pants. My deal with my editor was that Party, you know, business on top, party on the bottom. Because I need, I need cargo pants to you know, carry my notepads and stuff like that, and, and carry pens and stuff like that. I'm like, I'm not gonna wear a suit. I'll ruin the suit. So I came back from that gig, dusty as hell. I said, "You're buying me these shoes." <laughs> guess what? This guy bought me these shoes. He I gave think, me the I corporate was say, credit I think card. You got something about shoes. You want everybody to buy your shoes? <laughs> because he ruined, but they ruined my shoes. Running through the cornfield, oh, running through mud, and my my dress shoes were ruined. And I said, you're, "I said, I got the story." I'll write the story, but I'm going down to the Clark outlet in, in the center of Hanover, Pennsylvania. They had a Clark outlet. I said, you're buying me these shoes. I said, either you can pay me back or do you give me the corporate credit card. You give me the corporate credit card. I went and got a cheap pair of shoes because I wasn't going to buy an expensive pair of shoes on his dime because sure. they weren't expensive to start off with. You know, so it's like, you know, comparable, comparable pair of shoes and ran through that. I sat in the middle of a, a super highway once while I extracted a dump truck from a, a ravine. I mean, oh, this is a good one. This is a real good one. Gettysburg, in the center of Gettysburg, there's a uh, Abraham Lincoln giving a kid direction statue by J. Okay. Stewart Johnson. If you've ever been to Gettysburg, you know what I'm talking about. It's in the center of the circle. I, I've been square. there, but I, I was a little boy, so I, yeah, I don't know. Well, I lived there for so long, for you yeah. know, seven months. I, but it's anyhow, I'm on my day off, which is never a day off when you're a journalist. And I'm with my buddy from home, and we're walking out, and there's sirens, police are zooming up. I, used, I have my credential, always carry my credentials with me. And they all knew me, all the cops knew me. And so I sent him back behind the police line, and I went up to, to the fire engine where they were hiding behind. Apparently, someone left a suitcase next to the statue, and they didn't know what it was. They sent in the bomb robot. They sniffed it, you know. And so I'm sitting behind this this, this fire truck. We're all looking at each other like, we're way too close if this is a nail bomb or something like that. Like, <laughs> like we're, we're, we're dead. Like, we were way too freaking close. And I told my mom this later. She's like, you're an idiot. I'm like, well, that's what they told me to stand. They're like, we're all hiding behind this tanker truck. And it turns out it was a, it was a, it, the bear, I'm not trying to bury the lead, but it, they, um, it was someone left a, a suitcase full of stiletto heels. Wow. So that's that's odd. Odd. And so six <laughs> hours later, they open it up and we're all like, ah, hiding. And it's a bunch of like knee high stiletto heels shoes. That's awesome. And we, to this day, I don't know what they were doing there, why they were left there. It was probably a prank. Yeah. That's funny though. I mean, yeah. You see some crazy stuff, you know, just in, in everyday life, but I'm sure as a journalist. And, journal, and then you get to write about it, too, which is kind of yeah, fun. Yeah, exactly. That was a fun so article. I, bar I buried the lead on that one. I did. I, it's a matter of, I'm like, I am not putting everything at the top of this article. Like, I'm having fun with this one. This one was yeah, fun. Of course. My, it was my day off. I went into the newsroom afterwards, grabbed my bike, went back into the newsroom. I wrote the article up. Front page, fun article. Had, a little, had like, the little Johnny Five robot, you know. For those people who remember Johnny Five from Short Circuit, yeah. robot going poking at it. I got a picture of him poking at it. <laughs> him, I assume it was a he, a boy, boy robot. Or, right, or, I don't or, know. Or, or uh, robot, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure what gender uh, yeah. that guy a robot. is, but yeah, exactly. the robot. So um, 
back in 2010, I know you were dabbling in podcasting and, and yeah. now we're here in, you know, 2024. Oh, so different. Are there, what, what are the things that you think have changed the most? I mean, obviously, look, I know that it's obviously exploded in popularity. Now yeah, it's like it the flavor of the week. Everybody wants to have a podcast. I get that. But yeah. in terms of technology or oh, other elements yeah. of it, what else has changed? The technology, hands down. I mean, like I used to, do, I, I used to use Zoom. For that, I used Google Hangouts on Air. For that, I, I used Skype, I think. Skype with some plug-in. Like, right. I mean, it was rudimentary at best. Now you have things like Squadcast, which we're on right now. A little inside baseball there, but... You know, Squadcast, Riverside, which I don't, I'm not a big fan of Riverside because they, they, they don't quite get it. But there's all this technology out there. There's even AI that does like the, the short clips for you and finds the clips for you that that's changed. So I didn't have to find my questions, find my points, Sh throw in AI and it finds the most amazing things. Then I'm like, I don't remember talking about this, but this is awesome. <laughs> I mean, AI finds the most amazing clips. Sometimes it fails miserably and finds really dumb clips. Yeah, generally it's pretty good. I mean, AI with a podcasting is great. It helps with the show notes, the transcriptions. I mean, it's 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 the best time to be in a pot doing a podcast is now. Yeah, there's a lot less work. It's still a lot of work. Yeah, more the more the work's recording the show, and and, and you just getting some gaffes here and there and that kind of thing. It's like, the fun part, whereas all the mechanical stuff like you can sort mic. of automate and outsource and things like yeah, that. Yeah, you might put headphones on, even though I'm not wearing headphones right now, but, you know, they also have very good echo cancel cancelization now in Squadcast. That's the reason I've turned that sucker on. Like that, that, right. I actually don't works. like the headphones. I wear them just because I'm worried that it will start to... I know it, sometimes it'll be working okay, but then if there's a lag, it'll start to echo. So oh, I just wanted oh, yeah. to make sure if I'm in the headphones... I have headphones over I, here, but my, my ears get warm at times, and I'm like, you know... Yeah. I prefer it works. without it, but I, I, you know, don't want to risk the technology side of it. So you oh, know. I, I live on the wild side. So, so if somebody was going to start a podcast today, what, uh, what advice would you give them? Just get started. Your first episode yeah. so is going to suck. Yeah. And I would say publish that sucky episode. Don't hold back. I would still say do four episodes up front, do a trailer, like a two minute trailer and put that out first. Get that into the iTunes, into the directories. Then I put out four episodes right away. Bam, get them all out there. One fell swoop, all published at once. That way people who like it, they, can, they don't have to listen to one way a week. That also gives you no buffer, but it gives you, you can then say that the following week, you know, start planning things out. Get Notion, get a, a spreadsheet and plan out what you want to talk about. And like for me, I, I have people knocking on my door, not literally, but my email door constantly saying, I want to be on the show, I want to be on the show. I'm like, well, you're going to have to wait till August if I'm even interested because I have so many people interested in being on the podcast. And it's just wild, but you, just be organized. Don't fly by the seat of your pants. I mean, you don't have to plan all the questions out ahead of time, but know where you're going, know your premise. And your premise might, premise might change halfway through the podcast. Yeah. Also, try and get to 30 episodes. Pod fades a real thing. Try to get to at least 30. And then you can also upload your stuff to archive.org. They love the content. So if you don't want to pay for hosting after you're kind of fizzled out, don't get rid of it. Put it on archive.org for free. That way you have free hosting for your podcast. You Your legacy can kind of live on. You know, that kind of thing. I, yeah, I have like cool. 10, 15 podcasts up on archive. I go back every once in a while and look at them. I'm like, oh, God, these are awful. <laughs> Well, yeah, when we all start, but you know, I'm so with you on that because there's always um, this sort of trepidation about wanting to make it perfect, wanting to oh, don't. Like, have it's not NPR. It's not NPR. But, but it's right, not professional radio. The more rehearsed it is, the more the more oh. perfect it, you try to make it, the stiffer it is, and then people aren't really that interested. It's not as engaging. I mean, some Plus, are. I mean, there's ones that there's like Recorded Future has a podcast. It's on digital. It's on like digital threats and cybersecurity and all that. And it's produced. Sure. But the you know, Temple Raston is a professional NPR journalist. Right. Right. If you're a radio journalist, I was never a radio journalist. Everyone always, my editor, when I left the newspaper world, said, You should go on the radio. I'm like, With this voice? <laughs> I feel bad for you, Brett, for editing me. Jeez. Oh, it's totally fine. I don't know what you're but, talking but about. My point being is, like, I talk fast. I'm from Philadelphia. You know, we talk fast, no spaces in our words, you know, blah, 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 all that stuff. But the thing is, is that, like, there are, is a place for storytelling and is yeah. a place for those kind of interview podcasts. 
There's right. a spot for informative podcasts. Pick a genre, have fun with it. You know, try and get some music in in the front. You know, royalty free music. YouTube will still flag you at least once, saying that you're using something you shouldn't use, and you have to kind of say, "No, I have the royalty free version. Thank you very much." So you think people should it. put it on YouTube in addition to the oh, absolutely. Version. YouTube yeah. is the second biggest search engine after Google. And it's yeah. owned by Google, but you know, definitely people, you know, YouTube even now imports it for you. I don't do it. I do it manually. Yeah. I don't trust it to get everything perfect yet. Yeah. Um, but so I do upload my videos manually. Even if you don't have a video podcast, you only have an audio podcast, you can put your album art up front. Right. And just play it there. People listen to it on, on you know, while they're driving in YouTube. Very cool. They should watch it while they're driving in YouTube. But I know people do, but don't. Yeah, hopefully not. I mean, yeah. I, I can't tell you how many times I'm driving. And I see somebody with the cell phone up in front. Of, thinking to myself. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> I just, accident I waiting something. to happen. It's crazy. Yeah. So you're also the founder of Goldstein Media. We talked about that a little bit. Yeah. It's a full service digital marketing agency. Can you tell us what that's all about and what services you actually provide? Yeah, so we do everything from WordPress websites, because that's our CMS of choice, all the way through SEO, some paid media, we'll do digital strategy, we'll do some podcast coaching, we'll do some production for people if they want us to kind of produce their podcast, a little bit help them figure out how to do it. We'll do email marketing, it's kind of your run in the mill digital agency, nothing really, you know, shocking there, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So do you do you have so if somebody wanted to get a website and get it online, you could do it like soup to nuts and start with that. Yeah. What if somebody had a site and they wanted to optimize it? And things we like we that, do it all. Know. Wherever okay. it comes in, I mean, generally, you know, if it needs, if we're looking at it from optimization side of things, and we say, hey, look, you know, this needs to be redesigned. It, it's not because we want we necessarily need want to. It might be because we need to. Okay. So it really depends. I mean, we'll host people's websites for them. We'll. Our big deal is you own your domain name. You own your domain name. Like, okay. don't let me buy your domain name for you. You own your domain name. You know, even the hosting, like if you want to, you know, we prefer that we host it for you because we'll maintain it, update them daily with rolling backups and all that stuff. And generally that's what we'll, we kind of insist on doing. But like, if you ever want to part ways, we'll give you the files. We'll even move it for you to your own server later on. Like it's no hard feelings. And you prefer WordPress as your platform? Oh, hands down. It's 47, 48% of the web runs on WordPress. Right. People are like, oh, WordPress is so buggy and glitchy. If you don't update it, anything's <laughs> buggy and glitchy. Just update it every day okay, or have someone do it for you. Every, I mean, I update 55 sites a day, every single day. I mean, wow. keep in mind I have a tool that does helps me do it and I spot yeah. check them. It's always the ones I don't spot check that go down. And I'm always like, get an email like, it went down. I'm like, ah! It's just how it works, you know, but, you know, of course. I'll spot check a bit, probably 10 to 15 a day and r rotate them around to make sure that nothing broke. Generally, nothing breaks and when you're updating stuff. And if you update stuff, you're not going to get hacked. Right. And the other thing about WordPress is that you know it's going to be around. Yeah. If you host with another platform and what if they decide they're going to go out of business, they're going to change you something. You can't get your crap out of it. You're done. Yeah. If and you want to be done with me transfer and work with someone else. You can because everyone has WordPress. And if right. you don't, you'll figure it out. I mean, yeah. ultimately, and I would say stay the heck away from WordPress.com. Do the self-hosted version. Yeah. I know Matt Molenek. I've met him before. I've talked to him on the talked to him before. I'm not a big fan that he calls it WordPress.com and there's the open source pro project is WordPress.org. Big point of contention with me. I don't like that. No <laughs> one does, but it's a smart marketing move. It makes brand kind of makes the whole brand. Confusing as hell. It, so it is really confusing. The yeah, automatic runs WordPress.com, runs Tumblr, runs Pocket Cast, runs a bunch of different things. And all more power to them. But if you want more control over your website, you want to do yourself hosted, you know, Rocket. I, we use Rocket.net for our hosting. Okay. Ben over there is a fantastic, fantastic dude. Not cheap hosting, but it's worth it. It's good. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I've noticed a difference. Um, my site actually runs on WordPress as well. And I was using, um, I have my own server that I was used for my other sites. And for a while I was, I was doing that, but I'll be honest with you, uh, when I did the speed checks, it was pretty slow. So I actually switched that site to a WordPress, uh, like specialty hosting yeah. and it's so much faster. It's nine it's days. So much better. It's incredible. What it's a good server yeah. means to get off a of Bluehost, get off our host skater. Yeah. Don't use GoDaddy for anything other than domain name registration. Seriously, 
Right. So, when it's optimized, it, I mean, it, it, WordPress runs really, really well. So I, I'm totally with you there. So do you have an ideal client? Is there somebody in Small particular? Small mid-sized company, you know, one to 200 people in the business. The minute it goes to committee, I don't want anything to do with it. The one or two people working on the project with me because you have to be active in the project with me. Okay. But I don't want to say, oh, I have to go out and bring this to committee every time there's a change. No, no, thank you. I'll pass on that. Thank you very much. Gotcha. So if people want more information, where would they find that about your services that you offer for that? Well, you can go to goldsteinmedia.com. You can go to sethgoldstein.id. That is an identification. That brings you to my kind of my link card of sorts. It brings you to sethgoldstein.me, okay. which is kind of where I have my personal site and stuff up there, all my links to stuff there. So Entrepreneurs Enigma is a great place to go for the podcast. Mark Junto is my daily, my, not my daily, geez, I'm getting insane to do a daily. My weekly <laughs> newsletter I put out weekly. I'm not as crazy as Brett here who does a daily podcast. <laughs> and, you do, and you do a good daily podcast. I listen to it. It's, it's really good. Oh, I really like it. I daily is insane, I, dude. You know, it's it's a passion project, you know, and it, it's like anything else. I mean, as entrepreneurs, we, we, we realize that you can do stuff for money and that will wear out really fast. Yeah. When you do stuff because you love it and it's generally what you want to do then I think that comes through and it, and it makes it a lot easier to be successful and motivated to do it. So absolutely, um, that's awesome. So my last question that I always have to ask okay. is if you could give only one tip to entrepreneurs who are starting a business or want to, what would that be? Just get started. Same thing with podcasting. Just get started. Try it. Do a side hustle if you have to. If you can't, if you can't swing the, you know, the nine to five entrepreneurship, which is not nine to five, it's nine. It's literally 24 seven. But like if you can do a side hustle, it, just get started. It's easy to start a business. You know, always put away some quarterly taxes, kind of important, so you don't get hit by the IRS. Well, other than that, just get started on a side hustle and just have fun with it. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I mean, I know for me, um, when I started off in digital marketing, I spent mm -hmm. the first few months learning and I was getting smarter, but I was just getting broker because I wasn't doing anything. Once I actually started doing things, Mm -hmm. It was terrible. Like you said before, like your first podcast episode, oh, your terrifying. first website, yeah. it's terrible. But you can't get to great until you start and go through terrible. So you start there, just yeah. get going, make adjustments as you go and Love continue it. to refine it. And then as you look back on the progress you made, that is motivating. Whereas Absolutely. if you never start, then you're, you're always waiting for that perfect moment that never comes. Absolutely. So I'm with you there. Spot on, buddy. Okay, well. With that, um, it's just about time to wrap things up. Thanks again, Seth, for oh, sharing all your Thanks insights. Thanks for having me. Great tips with us. Again, go to Entrepreneurs Enigma to find the podcast and Goldstein Media for complete digital marketing services to grow your online presence. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, remember, no matter what you want from your business and your life, don't compromise, optimize.